welcome back. See, discussing impacts of flooding and food security. Well, that's taking to another question again. So, lastly, from me, how can we ensure food security in our country, Nigeria? <laughs> it all goes back to the issue of planning. Plan again. There was a time in this country, there was a policy known as the Green Revolution. Yes, yes. Where young people were encouraged to go into to farming. farming. And government will give subsidies, not subsidy on petrol, mm. <laughs> but subsidy on agriculture. Where young people were encouraged with a whole lot of incentives, tax rebates, and things like that. Those so that, things don't sustain, don't last. But those are things where that are we with help those us. today? So when we talk a, about a feed the nation came again. Where exactly. are we? So when we talk <gasps> about tackling food insecurity, it has to do with detailed well planning. For example, Bainway State is the yam uh, center Brazil, yes, producer yeah. for Nigeria. Yeah. But I listened to an, uh, an MD of one of the agencies in Bainway, and he says this is 2022. Since 1960, we got our independence. Mm. Bainway State cannot boast of exporting a quantity of yam that can even feed yeah, a yeah. household. I mean, it's bad. It's bad for us. So we need to look at the future. It's not only rice, because I hear the government says, you know, some of the take home for this yeah. government is, oh, we've done so much in rice production. We've done so much in rice production. I still bought a bag of rice a few days back, and it cost me about 40,000 naira. You won't believe it, Nigerian rice. You know, so what are we saying? There's a need for planning. Another thing that I, I need to mention after the fact that we've talked about agriculture and the need for young people to go into it is mm -hmm. that as an advocate for renewable energy and a better future, mm. we need to watch what we do to our environment. We all have a role to play. In this part, government doesn't take the blame alone. Okay. We all have a, you know, a role to play. Yeah. And what do I mean? We need to start moving from things that destroy the planet. There mm -hmm. are countries or states in the world that says in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years, we won't have any vehicle that produces fossil fuel in our environment anymore. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? We are still talking about crude oil. Ma, can I shock you? <laughs> Over 57 oil wells were submerged in this current flood. Wow. And we still okay. cannot meet our OPEC quota for about 1.7 million barrels a day. So imagine 57 oil wells sunk, mm -hmm. then the, the, out, uh, the output goes down. Okay. And you know everything about this nation is centered on oil. Yeah, that's true. And that is the same oil where the subsidy is also taken from. Well, that's the same oil the politicians are dreaming to suck. That's the same oil they take the money and go and start abroad. So we need to diversify. And that has to do with even how we vote in our 2023 elections. We need to look at the issues. Who is going to save us from this quagmire? So when it comes to issues like this, we all have a role to play. I keep saying that. Mm. Then uh, the truth is, we have LPG in Nigeria. Do you know, since I was born, Nigeria has been flaring gas. <laughs> and that is the gas now that in Ukraine and Russia, people are looking for gas to buy. Mm -hmm. And we are flaring it, I mean, wasting it away. We can change. We can improve and use more clean energy in terms of electricity, in terms of cooking, and all of those things. So we can save our environment from impending danger. Thank you so much for all these explanations that, that you gave. You know, sometimes I, I look cold when I look at all things happening around us. I'm beginning to think, because I'm for the youth, yeah. if we don't correct this, is now how would their future actually be? Exactly, yes. Yeah, are we going to leave all this in for these young ones coming up to correct? So government, please listen to us and do what we can so that the future of our children will really be, be very, very bright. And everybody will live happily. We'll have what it takes. If we channel our resources in the right direction, we, we can afford to do something and change anything that we want to change here in Nigeria. God really bless us so well. But because we are not um, self-centered or we are confused on what to do, or I don't really know what is really happening. But what I'm trying to say is like, we should not allow this to repeat itself. Before I start taking the girls, can't donate uh, uh, clothes that you said, donate this one. Let's see what we can do to avoid a repeat of this. It's really, really very devastating. Some of us in this area didn't experience it, but I put myself in the shoes mm. of those mm. who were really affected by this flood. Please, let's do, do something. Well, we'll take a break. Now come back, enter the question and answer session. Vivid view. Save and do it. 
Welcome back. There are already a lot of uh, interesting questions from the audience. So, I guess, please provide the answers. Thank you. So, one of our audience asked, how is government, you know, making proactive measures towards addressing food insecurity and, of course, the headers farmers crisis? Let me say this. Uh, the approach by government begs for more. What do I mean? Yes, they say they are doing stuff. I'm not here making a case for government, but we've seen a bit of some measures, but it's still not enough. enough yeah. Still not enough. So proactive off. measures are different from reactive measures. What we've seen over the years reactive. are reactive measures. The event happened, then they come into the play. Rather than plan, some of the things we have mentioned since the beginning of the show avoid are the things they can do to avoid yes. this same case of 2012, 2022 repeating itself, maybe in 2023. The Edas Farmers crisis is one that has not left us. It's like a recurring malaria, <laughs> you know. Although the approach by the military and the security agencies in the north is yielding some form of result, yeah, but it's already spilling over. Mm. So the that, Lagos in Bado Expressway is now a no-go area. Yeah. And you know that's one of the most busiest mm. roads in West Africa, where people move goods and services back and forth. So the Edas Farmers crisis is one that, the, the, whether it's the security architecture, whether it's the government's willingness to you know, address the real issues, whether it's segregation, whether it's people wanting to you know, make a nation for themselves and all of that, we all need to come and sit at the table and ask ourselves, where do we go from, from here? here. Hmm. The other one is about the seemingly seen hypocrisy and ineptitude in terms of assessing funds from government agencies for small farmers like my friend who asked the question. Mm. And of course, we've seen that not just in farming alone, but across all kinds of businesses in Nigeria, raising or getting funds is always a very herculean tax. I remember starting my business some years ago. I had to take money from friends and families. And that's what I encourage young people to always do. Yeah. Save something, then get from friends and families. Don't always be in a hurry to borrow, okay? Mm -hmm. Another thing you can do is what they call crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. There must be a well-articulated well business plan. Present it and tell people, if you invest into my business, you get a percentage of this. The microfinance banks are there that produces or provides maybe 1% of you know some, profit some and all of those things skin, the right? last thing i would like to address though it's not part of your question is the high population rate <laughs> we need to work on that otherwise we may be you know struggling in the next few years with the meager resources that the country produces for the number of people on ground so your your parting words now <laughs> yes yeah, so on a final note, yeah. like I said, and I'll say it again, the issue of climate change, issue of flooding, issue of food insecurity, issue of whatever it is as a nation and as a people, we all have a role to play. To play. The question is, are you playing your role for the future? I think also came to his last place, he said, are you playing your role for the future? Because he mentioned it, even when rain is falling, people will go now say, oh, yeah, oh, this opportunity has come for us to park our debt jam, just point in the flood. And the flood will take down, block, blocking our waste systems Drainages and all that, bridges right. systems. So these are ways we, we're supposed to, things we're supposed not to do so that we will all live in a very good environment and you are be able to avoid some of these things we're just talking about. So play your own role the best way you know you can to help yourself and help your neighbor. We should really be a brother skipper here. And those of us who, who live where this uh, flood are really affected, do all you can to give a helping hand one way or the other. And then you that is even affected, see how you can see, make a plan to live from that area first. Don't stay there again. Maybe after this season, you will go out and rebuild your house and stay in the same place again. Mm -hmm. No, no. So, so let's also be proactive and do something better. We're not waiting for all, all everything now for government. They, they really have major role to play, but let's also help ourselves because we are the one really suffering it. 
were the one really suffering it. In the head, they can need to, okay, give them certain things and not, that's all. But you are the one suffering. We lost lives, properties, and so many things because of this uh, flood. That's the way I want to uh, conclude this. Thank you so much, uh, guests. Production crew, audience here, and also viewers out there, want to thank you for your patience with us. Okay, I invite uh, artist Gabby the Hustler to sign up this program. Please join us next week, same time, same station. I am a Healy's. God bless. Vivid view. See it and do it. This is the view.